Welcome to What's Up in Jeju, where I visit places around the island and talk about what's happening with Hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bint. I am excited, but it's yeah. my first time not only with you, but it's my first time doing this show mm -hmm. over video call. Yeah. So I'm going to let you do a lot of the leading here and you yeah. just... Take it away, and I'll just jump in with questions. Yeah, for sure, for sure. What are sure. we discussing today? So um, just FYI, there is a little bit of a lag between you and I, but yes. today's episode of What's Up in Jeju, uh, actually, Alex, is going to be really different <laughs> from what we've done in the past. Oh. Yeah, so I don't know. Have you, <laughs> have you shadowed Peter for this show? Uh, I mean, I watch it at home, Okay. so I wasn't like here. But yeah, I, I've seen. normally I'm expecting these different tourist places or things to do activities that are brought up by right. jeju dc JDC. yeah yeah mm -hmm. JDC. what's different today so up until this point we've mostly explored jeju island through like its history and culture and we actually got to visit some really nice places around the island and then learned a bunch of really cool stuff what i what i consider cool because i love history and culture and we also got to meet some people who work at jdc and took a peek into what they do that affects all of us who live on the island or visitors but in today's show we're we're not going to visit any particular site so we're not going on location to any tourist attraction or anything else or even talk about history and culture that's not <laughs> what we're going to be doing today at least not in the way All that right. we've yeah that we've done before so today we're going to get a little <laughs> bit more introspective maybe a little bit more philosophical and delve a little bit into the human psyche and i'm actually really looking forward to you and i talking about some of the topics that will be brought up. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. So well, it, I hope I don't disappoint. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm I'm actually really interested in, in um, kind of picking your brain and seeing what you have, um, what, what your opinions are. Because in today's episode, uh, the person I interviewed, so every show there's a person that I interview, today's interviewee has to deal with a lot of this in her work about like delving into the human mm. psyche or this or psychology human psychology C jdc set up an interview for me to speak with miss pei yu chong who is the founder and ceo of hakuda pr firm so it's a public relations firm and jdc is actually a huge organization I i'm if you've been to jeju i'm sure you've seen it I'm actually positive, like 100% sure you've seen at least the <laughs> sign, right? Because they have a huge duty-free shop in the mm -hmm. airport. But it's a huge oh, organization, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's involved in just so many aspects of island life. And they do have an in-house PR and marketing department, but they also outsource a lot of their work to private agencies, including Miss Bay's Hakuda. Uh, she's been working with JDC uh, in public relations and marketing for several years now. And when we spoke, we talked about the work that she's done for them. But we also talked a lot about how her work uh, evolved over the past few years from pre-pandemic to the pandemic to post-pandemic, which we're kind of just heading into now. So what is a PR agency, right? What do they do? Do you work with a PR agency, mm -hmm. Alex? Personally, mm -hmm. uh, no. Uh, my PR agency is whatever I post on social yeah. media, yeah. and it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've worked for PR agencies in that I've been, I guess, the I, I, I don't even know. I've been the model for their campaigns, but mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever worked directly for a PR agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I wasn't sure what it was either. I'm not famous enough or... I guess important enough to, <laughs> to be represented by a. We're in the same club. Yeah, All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what do they do, really? Like, what is its function? W what is your understanding of what a PR agency is, or what they do? Uh, my understanding is that they are there to make you look good, make your company, make your organization, make you look good, right. but also to clean up a lot of your messes right. when it comes to celebrities, I right. feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Celebrities post, and then they go on and say, actually, what they meant to say was that. So mm -hmm. that's what I assume a PR agency does. Right. So my understanding of what a PR agency does is like like the same as you, but at its baseline, um, I feel like... Uh, it has to do a lot of with a lot of um, like understanding the human psyche, like knowing what people want mm, or maybe yeah. like making them think they know what they want or maybe convincing them to want something. Right. So, <laughs> oh. I don't know, am I getting a little too Ooh. deep here? I don't know. 
but I just... Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, so it's basically, in my mind, a PR agency, what they do um, at its core is they control people, like, what they think. <laughs> it's, it's my understanding. Mm-hmm, yeah. Right? Um, just, I just think it's so interesting to, to ponder these things. It's I may be the weird one here, I don't know, but it's just so fascinating <laughs> no, to no. me because... And I so I really had a blast talking with her and picking at her brain. She's been doing this for close to 20 years. So one of my very first questions when I sat down for my interview with her was um, like, how did your work change with the pandemic? It's Mm. the pandemic affected not just Korea, but the world. It's like it changed life for everybody. So how did um, from her perspective, as a uh, PR firm, how did JDC pivot with the onset of the pandemic? Um, That's the question I asked her, and I do have a video of her answer. Okay, let's put it up. Uh Uh-oh. Start it up again. Mm-hmm. 근데 저희가 채널을 오픈한 상태니 그거를 이제 영상으로 해서 채널로 온라인 채널로 해서 많이 보여주고 근데 저는 그게 코비드 때문에 한게 아니라 음. 그거를 이제 디지털 채널로 소통하는 이게 너무 강화되니 이거를 빨리 이제 기관들도 했으면 좋겠다는 거예요. 음. 채널이라는 게 결국 오래되고 잘 브랜드 아이덴티티가 정립이 되면 영향력이 생기는 거니까요 음. 채널에. 음. All right, so we're coming back from that. And, okay, social media is obviously a big mm-hmm. part of it. Can you give us a quick rundown of what was said right there? Right. So before the pandemic, Ms. Bay was already talking to JDC and, like, her other government clients about the importance of being on social media, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, right? And she found, I do have an image if you want to play it real quick, um, of the all the, the three JDC social media accounts that they have. Uh, I I do believe they have some more, but these are, I guess, the main three. She found that many government agencies and JDC included, this is pre-pandemic, they didn't see the need for or really the importance of like a robust presence on these platforms. And even if they did have accounts, they weren't really being utilized properly, she found. So in the midst of her persuading JDC and others about the, the importance of building brand power and like brand authority on social media. She convinced uh, these agencies to create some of these accounts, these social media accounts. Um, And then she said, like, right after the pandemic hit, right? And then everything was shut down, like all events were shut down and nobody was meeting in person. It was the era of like the untacked the uncontact, right? And interestingly enough, JDC was taking her advice by this point, uh, like right before uh, the pandemic hit, and they had opened up all these channels and then really started putting some manpower behind running them. So when then the so when the pandemic hit and then like all events and festivals were canceled like indefinitely, it was easy for her and for JDC to pivot quickly into the digital realm. So for her, she said it wasn't difficult because so it was something that she was already working towards, especially for government agencies um, uh, to start doing these. Well, that's brilliant timing of yeah, all right? that because, as we know, the the pandemic itself was a catalyst for so many changes to yeah. happen quickly. It made the delivery systems better, faster, quicker, and yeah. we all used them. And now, of course, the social mm-hmm. media is a big part of it as well. Um, so we've discussed JDC many times. I mean, this is all of us, <laughs> JDC, every week. <laughs> but uh, we've discussed uh, like uh, this before on the show. But just as a quick reminder, let me go over the origin story of JDC, if I may. Uh, I do have a, mm-hmm. an image here of JDC Corporate HQ, just in case anybody is interested in um, 
what that looks like. But back in 2002, right, Jeju Island was officially named a self-governing province. And that means that the government Mm. here is autonomous in many ways. And one of the biggest projects that Jeju uh, set out to do was become a free international city. Uh, basically a mm. hub for log- logistics and commerce. And that's why Jeju is able to have like its own visa-free entry program. You don't find that anywhere else in Korea. It's unique. Um, and then also, we are able to operate a duty-free shop that's available to domestic travelers. So if you're flying out of Jeju, doesn't matter where you're flying to, you can shop at the duty-free shop and get a huge discount on a lot of really nice thing, uh, nice stuff. Um, But this is a huge undertaking, this whole project, to become a free international city. So in order to manage this ambitious project, a government organization was created to run it and to manage it. And they called it JDC, the Jeju Development Center or Corporation. Uh, JDC works in various fields like tourism, education, medical science, IT, advanced science, a lot of different things, many of which we've discussed these past few months that uh, I was on the show. Um, and Miss Bay and I were discussing this, and she mentioned something that I found actually very interesting. I found it quite interesting because of my viewpoint, and I am an expat living in Korea. Um, but before we discuss the implications of what she's saying, I want you all to listen to it for yourself. And Alex, I'd love to know your thoughts on it as well. Uh- Absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and get the video up. I will say that picture of that building is mm-hmm. phenomenal. Even yeah, the right. buildings in Jeju are gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get the video going. Mm-hmm. 조금 더 우리는 너무 한민족 그게 강하니까 음. 그러니까 다문화 해야 된다라고 딱 하는 순간 아 그래서 제주 국제 자유 도시구나 음. 여기는 외국인이 많이 들어와야 되는 곳이구나라는 음. 생각을 하게 됐어요 사실 그래서 국제학교도 만들고 음. 이렇게 하는구나 아 그거구나라는 저도 로직을 탁어 그때 좀 깨우치게 된 계기가 됐는데 결국 사람인 거죠. 음. Oh, mm. interesting. Okay, let's talk about that. So what was she talking about? It was about the fertility yes. rate, right? Yes. So she said uh, not too long ago, she was reading the news, and then she read that South Korea once again hit the world's lowest fertility rate. Um, oh. They say that in order for a country to keep their population the same size and stable, a couple has to have at least two children, 2.1 to be exact. And Korea, however, mm-hmm. um, I think it was the tail end of last year, they released the number, currently stands at about 0.8 children per couple. So that's wow. really, really low a lot lower than what it should be. And as we know, a declining population hugely affects a country's economy. It just affects every part of life. Um, So what Miss Bay was saying in her interview was that when she read the news article about this birth rate problem in Korea, her mind turned to Jeju being a free international city Mm. because she said that with Koreans' birth rate in decline, the country may not have much choice in the future, but to be more inviting to foreigners in order to sustain the population and the economy. So in her opinion, Jeju being a free international city may be actually quite perfectly poised to be the forerunner in Korea to actually make that happen. So like, what are your thoughts? I, for me uh, personally, it was like this huge aha moment. I, I got like goosebumps. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I haven't even thought about that. What about you? That's brilliant. I love the fact that she brought that up. And mm-hmm. I like the fact that that's okay to talk about. And, and this openness to foreigners, not just being here, because I've always felt that it's okay to be here, but mm-hmm. to encourage that as well, to kind of come here and, and set root here. Uh, the numbers itself that you gave to are incredible. Point eight, And obviously, I haven't helped yet, so mm-hmm. I'm not helping the <laughs> population yet. But yeah. I'm tr- Working on it. But again, it's not only that. It's not only point eight. It's also that we're having babies later, which means that our kids will have kids later. Mm-hmm. And this is all contributing to that. And that is interesting having Jeju mm-hmm. because that is also very appealing to me as someone who loves Jeju right. as well, making it a little more enticing. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, how long have you been here in Korea, Alex? Oh, just a couple years. I think four, one, two, three, four, 14. Oh, gosh. Wow. (laughs) That's a long time. (laughs) Wow. And I still haven't had 2.1 kids yet. Yeah. Um, It's my my fault. Yeah, I think uh, (laughs) I... I'm a, I'm about the same. I think I've been here. Um, I took a break in the middle, but maybe about that 14, 15 years. So my next question to you, Alex, I'm I'm just really curious. I actually, mm-hmm. I, I'm really curious about you because today's the first yeah, day we sure. met. But um, so, how has your experience <laughs> been in Korea, living in Korea? As a foreigner, I've and as a foreigner from America, there's obviously some things I have to acknowledge, some advantages yeah. I've had. Mm-hmm. But it's been nice. And I have felt lonely, of course, and I yeah. felt frustrated. And, you know, getting your name on a bank statement when it's Alex Michael Sigrist, mm. or is it Sigrist Alex Michael, or is it all caps or under? Mm. There have been a lot of struggles. Yeah. But I personally, well, I think they should fix, well, they did fix a lot of them, to be honest. But while mm-hmm. I personally think, you know, that has been a hardship, I appreciate it because once I got past those, and once you learn more of the language, Korea becomes more welcoming. Yeah. The more every time you try a little harder, and again, as an American coming from the Midwest, looking like I do, mm. it's different. But mm. it is interesting that they are changing in this Da Munha culture, this multicultural family culture yeah. too, um, which will be important to me in the future probably. Mm. So it's I've looking back in the last fourteen years, it's been an incredible experience of Korea also changing with the times and every year making it better for me and the other foreigners here, I think. Personal opinion, though. Yeah. Very well said. Very well said, Alex. That was quite beautiful, (laughs) (laughs) actually. Yeah, for me, too. Um, For me, it's a little bit different because I look Korean, so my experience is probably uh, quite different from yours. Mm -hmm. But again, my name is English. I don't have a Korean name. The same thing. I totally understand the caps, lower caps, the space, no space. I don't know which one is it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, All in all, I would say my experience as an expat in Korea has been wonderful, I love living in Korea. I love living in Jeju. It's been so great. So um, already the commerce sector in Jeju is set up to be more inviting to foreigners. And right now, uh, a lot of it, the infrastructure is for mostly for tourism. But after Mm -hmm. hearing what Miss Bay said, I think it will inevitably lead to more opportunities uh, for foreigners to come and live on the island to make it easier and more maybe more attractive because of being that free international city and being open um, to having people from er- like all across the world come into Jeju. So I want to get into the future. What's the future for JDC in terms of um, public relations and what what are they doing? right now and in the future. Well, truthfully, a lot. Um, There's a lot happening now, especially now that the central government has eased up on a lot of restrictions. So not just JDC, but a lot of companies, a lot of organizations have been pivoting once again. Um, And uh, honestly, I think it's going to look a lot different from what uh, was pre-pandemic, what we're used to, right? Um, But I don't know. We'll we'll see, right? But I asked Ms. Bay, what her job with JDC specifically will look like in the coming year. Um, I do have a video of it, and she had uh, she had some um, some good insight. All right, well, fascinating. Let's take a listen. JDC is 앞으로 나아가야 될 홍보 방향을 이렇게 말씀드려 보자면 굉장히 좋은 일들을 많이 하셨거든요. 뭐 세형교를 지었지만 아직 잘 모르시는 분들도 계시고. 또 국제 학교들을 조성해서 많은 외국이나 이런 쪽에서 들어올 수 있는 어떤 인프라를 조성하는 투자도 유치를 했고 또 스타트업 여기에는 특히 1차 산업밖에 없던 불모지나 다름 없었는데 이런 스타트업들을 많이 발굴하고 지원하면서 이게 어떻게 보면 그 미래를 향해 나아가는 어떤 지금 다 그런 씨앗을 뿌렸다고 좀 생각이 들거든요. 근데 이것들이 다 동인에게 모두 이롭게 전달되기 위한 것인데 이런 점들이 조금 이로운 가능성이라는 점이 좀잘 부각돼서 우리 미래가 이렇게 펼쳐지고 있다는 것이 잘 전달됐으면 하는 그런 바람입니다. 
Wow, that's fascinating. All those different things. Yeah. Okay, uh, so a lot of things that we don't know about, and I guess that is the PR agency's job, right? Uh, yeah. What did she say to us? So she said that as she's been working with JDC, she realized that uh, JDC has done a lot of work on the island and completed a lot of projects that the public enjoys and we reap the benefit of it but we don't know that it was JDC behind it so obviously it's her job to let us the public know that it was in fact JDC as an example um, and I was actually really surprised to find find out uh, when she mentioned this but Seonggyo Seonggyo Bridge was actually built by JDC have you been no, this picture is gorgeous. Yeah. So this That's amazing. Yeah, this bridge is uh is located in Seogipo. So Seogipo is the south side of the island and this uh particular bridge is actually kind of mm, central south. Um but it I actually used to live just 10 minutes from here. We used to go here all the time, right? And it's a it's a short bridge. It's like it's a walking bridge. Um, that connects Jeju Island, the main Jeju Island, to an offshore island called Sesam. That is great. I, one of my favorite parts of Jeju is getting off the beaten path, going to those mm-hmm. uninhabited areas, going mm-hmm. into the Ole Guild Trail. Like I love that. So that is now on my bucket list. Thank you for sharing that one. But there's other things, too that we don't know about, right? Right. So the JDC is also behind various programs and assistance, financial assistance even, to uh, startup companies. What's Up in Jeju is supported by JDC, which is creating a free international city that resembles nature, embraces the future, and reaches the world. Arirang Radio.